had been under the rule of one man for over 19 years. People felt that even though there was a semblance of democratic or constitutional rule, their voices tended to be muted. One day we woke up and we were no more in government and uh, we didn't actually know what to do. There was this kind of cool mentality. Everybody should was an enemy and should be in relief of your position. We felt that it was important to have a more structured you know, program around the political parties and we entered into a collaboration with the Netherlands Institute for Multi-Party Democracy. The goal of the platform was to bring the political parties together and to create trust in a very difficult political time. We made our supporters to know that politics doesn't mean hatred. Politics doesn't mean that you can't talk to your other colleagues. So this is where the journey began. And I'm happy that so far it's been a worthy journey. Let's not forget that from 1982 right down to 1992, there was no party, political party, in this country. They were being banned. And um, Mr. Rawlings and his PNDC, that's the Provincial National Defense Council, which I serve as secretary, had a free reign, you know, on the playing field. We couldn't even talk to each other. They would think you were a traitor to your party. But thanks to IEA, bringing all of us together, the CPP, the PNC, the NPP, and NDC, and we held each other together, and there was a historic picture taken that for the first time in the history of Ghana, it has never happened. The IEA came in to bring both car parties together, to let the leadership see eye to eye, to talk, to discuss, to cross fertilize ideas on the way forward for our democracy, our elections to be open and transparent. At the time, before the program, the parties were really just election machines. They only operated six to eight months before an election, but we felt that it was important for them to be viable entities and to be a, a force and to offer alternatives. So the fact that a party was not in government didn't mean that it should go to sleep. The Secretary General of the then ruling party, NDC, even proposed to split the financial means equally. And this gesture really increased the sense of equality, but also trust in the platform even further. So your voice was as important as the voice of the other person from a party that has more seats in parliament. And that, I strongly believe, is one of the reasons why the platform endured. In a platform like this, where we are seated at the round table, things are not the same. Yes, there's the straight talk, there can be the hard talk, but there's also the humour which can soften things. They say they were doing forensic audit. Forensic audit means you want to establish criminal, any criminal liability. That doesn't help governance. So with the, this program, Ghana Political Party's program came and said, look, let's have a better transition. We've never been there, we never experienced it. And we did it. There was no history in this country you know, of a constitutionally you know, uh, transfer of power. But when the transitions, uh, the Presidential Transition Act came into being, clear processes had been uh, laid out now as to what to do when there is a change of government. For the first time in our history, you know, out, an outgoing government provides a briefing, a thorough briefing on its programs and its policies and the state of its, the economy and governance to an incoming government and there's collaboration. Competitive and multi-party democracy is a dynamic system. So we cannot be satisfied with where we are because change is always available.
Everyone is improving, the political parties are improving in terms of even the leadership and the nature of their discourse. The media organizations are also improving in terms of how they prepare for elections, how they cover elections and how they even discuss the issues that, that come up. Today what we see is that we have a critical voice, we have a loud, clear voice of the opposition providing policy alternatives, critiquing government policies and also coming up with their own policy positions on issues. But we haven't reached the democratic horizon. We've come far you know, and attained some democratic maturity, but it's important that we keep working. There are many challenges that continue to face us. At the moment, we are looking at a Ghana beyond aid. Many of our development partners you know, are uh, phasing out and come 2020 we'll be left on our own because we've attained middle income status. But there's still a lot of work to be done. So we really need to have this sort of program going, not only for our own country's development, but as an example to the continent. <laughs>